Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to be making a mug tree out of some scrap maple that I have here that you can see was has been sawed at one point and painted. You can still see the rough circular saw marks on there which is neat. But I'm going to flatten this to make it clean looking so that I can use it for my bar for some mugs. Start by going over the joiner here and flattening one face as is tradition. I take that rough face, put it through, and then use that same face that's now clean on the back of the fence to get two sides that are now at a 90 degree angle. Now taking that over to the table saw here, I can use those flat sides to reference and cut the piece square by making a cut on one opposing face and then following up on the other opposing face. And as these pieces weren't exactly the same, I had to make some adjustments here on the fly just to get them both to be somewhat square. I ended up going with more of a rectangle as well. One side is a little bit longer than the other. And I kind of determined this just based on eye and what looks good. And I wanted it a little different than a square, which is what I've normally seen with these mug trees. So this one was a little different. I didn't like those harsh rough edges on the side so I come through with the chamfer bit on the router here and just put a 45 degree chamfer on all sides. It just kind of broke up the piece a little bit, made it look a little different. And once again I removed that harsh corner that after joining and cutting on the table saw is very sharp. Now taking the piece back over to the table saw with a crosscut sled, I can cut these pieces to length. As I didn't have enough with one piece, I cut them into four blocks that I can stack in whatever way I want to make my mug tree. Now working on the plywood base here. Once again, this is a piece of scrap that I'm working with here, just kind of measuring and seeing what looks good to the eye. And I take that measurement and I add an inch on each side for a total of two inches, just so there's an inch reveal on all four sides. And then do the old sanity check there, to make sure that it looks good. And then I'll make that cut as I did previously with the crosscut sled. And that gives me a nice rectangle. Now gluing the piece up, it was very cold out, and I want this to stick very well going on end grain, so I'm using epoxy here. So I mix up a small batch of epoxy and then add a little bit to each layer, set the blocks in place, and then build my way up. And there's, there's no really good way to clamp this without it moving. I just adjusted it, got it where I liked it, and then checked on it periodically while it dried. Now taking it to the basement shop here, I'm just going to put some of the scrap pieces that I had from actually cutting the maple as edge banding. I do that by adding a little bit of glue, putting a strip on, and then just tacking it in place with a few pin nails to let that glue dry. Wipe out the squeeze out on both sides, and then repeat. And I'm adding two strips here, one on each opposing face. I'll tack it and let it dry. And the thought process behind that is then you cut your pieces exactly where they are so you get a better fit. And then a day or so later I can come back here, flush trim them even, and then I'm able to glue and tack on those other faces and they'll have perfect corners. So I just do a little bit of flush trimming with the saw here, which gets it pretty close. I need to get a dedicated flush trim saw. And then I come in with a piece of sandpaper on a flat surface and just clean up that edge so it's perfectly flat. Now coming back in, as I did previously, a little bit of glue. Now with those two opposing faces on, and I can tack it in place. Do the other side as well, and then wait for that to dry. 
Now I jumped through time a little bit here. I trimmed those other sides and now I'm just flattening this piece as there was a little bit of raised ridges from that edge banding. So I just hit it with the block plane here and clean it up. And remove those ridges on both sides. And I just check it to make sure that there's no wobble. Now finishing the piece, use polycrylic as it's not going to see a lot of use in terms of damage. And uh, it's a quick drying finish that I really enjoy, so I use it. I show one coat on camera, but ultimately I use three or four with some light sanding in between. Just to achieve a really nice finish. Now I'm just temporarily tacking this in place here with some super glue. And the weight of it alone is enough to clamp it while I have it set up here. I just measure my inch or so reveal on all four sides as I planned. And I move it a little bit as needed. And then that sets up pretty quick with that super glue there. Then I'm able to pre-drill here with some counter sinks as well. You can see ShopCat in the background there. So I drill two holes on the bottom on opposing corners and then just come in with a drywall screw just to hold it in place permanently. I think that glue would have been enough, but this was a little added insurance. Now I'm using some blue painter's tape just so I can mark my locations that I want to use for my hooks. I just use painter's tape as it gives you a little room for error and you don't have to worry about wiping pencil lines off your finished piece when you're done. So I make that mark, then I can pre-drill. I eyeball where it has to go and then line it up so I can trim the rest. I'm now coming in with these brass hooks that I had laying around that the mugs will sit on. So I use some bigger ones for the big mugs, as you can see. And then I come back in and use smaller ones here for these little shot glass Moscow Mule mugs. Also in brass. Just twist that on. Now you can see how it works here. I have these on opposing faces. I could put these little mugs there and then the big ones on top. It's turned out really nice. This was a very quick project. It can hold all sorts of mugs. It doesn't have to be bar themed. It could be coffee as well. But as always, I thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and also let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Thank you.